Hey what's up everybody, it's Kellen here from Start Your Systems and welcome to another video in MXGP Pro The Game where today we are playing 2017 MXGP of Assen Track, which is not too dissimilar to the 2018 MXGP um, well, of the Netherlands I should say from Assen and we're going to be discussing the recent MXGP of the Netherlands at Assen uh, the real life one that just happened this past weekend uh, was a few days ago now and some big storylines coming out of Europe from that one. Um, so a little bit of gameplay today, a little bit of uh, post-race wrap-up coverage and a little bit of fun on this uh, road course turned motocross track. Yeah, let's do it. Um, but yeah, MXGP of the Netherlands or it might have been the MXGP of Europe. Um, because they also race at Valkenswaard, so there's two Netherlands GP races <clears throat> in the season. Um, however, I have chosen in this video to ride as Jeffrey Hurlings, because Jeffrey Hurlings is your new 2018 MXGP World Champion. After uh, 80 plus GP victories to his repertoire, uh, of course including the MX2 classes, he is now finally an MXGP World Champion, his first ever MXGP World Championship uh, title. Of course, he's a three-time MX2 World Champion and uh, received a decent amount of flack for staying in the MX2 class for a long time. But now, he can finally say he's an MXGP Champion, put that behind him. And he did so uh, right here at Assen um, with some pretty wild performances. Uh, first moto wasn't necessarily that dramatic and uh, he had a big enough points lead that he basically just needed to finish in the points in the first moto and he would wrap up the world title after the first moto um, but uh, he did more than that did a great job kind of cruising out to an early lead and a relatively smooth looking race victory um, no race victory is easy but Jeffrey Hurlings in the sand makes stuff look quite easy I'll admit I'll admit that um, so yeah, cruises to the victory, picks up the world title, the celebrations are on, the champagne is flying and all this stuff like that. He doesn't drink any of it, but you know, they're spraying him down and stuff like that. And there's still a whole moto to go. Um, and in that second moto, uh, he did not get that great of a start. And uh, it was actually Koldenhoff who had the early race lead, Koldenhoff's lead in this race in game right now. And uh, he's Dutch as well, so he's great in the sand. <coughs> um, but yeah, Koldenhoff led, Hurlings made a couple early passes, but Cairoli took the lead from Koldenhoff. I think after, I think Hurlings crashed, and then Cairoli took the lead from Koldenhoff. So Hurlings came back from like seventh or eighth, just weaved through the field, uh, got to Cairoli for the lead with about 10 minutes to go. They had a great battle, uh, good stuff, lots of dicing back and forth, Cairoli blocking lines. Uh, but you kind of felt it was a matter of time and yeah before you know it a kind of a poor choice on getting around a lapper for Caroli meant that Hurlings just took a smooth inside line took the lead and he was out of there so a 1-1 performance on home soil to wrap up his first ever world title um, I mean it doesn't get much better than that for Hurlings and he seems like he is at the very very top of his game 30 race victories this year Incredible stuff. Uh, one more GP to go at Imola, so he could, you know, even click off another victory. And he looks pretty well set to come into this Motocross Nations at Redbud. About as good as you can be, um, no doubt about it. I mean, it it's impressive to see the comeback that he had from breaking his collarbone in the middle of the season, missing a whole round of the World Championship, and still winning as many races as he has and clinching the world title, not only with a GP to go, but a GP and a half, essentially, because he clinched it after the first moto this past weekend. And uh, I mean, Hurlings, he's always been the real deal, but now you can't deny it. He is a world champion in the MXGP class, dethrones Antonio Cairoli, who uh, you know took it from him last year, essentially. And crazy stuff, yeah, I mean, not much else really happened in the GP class because there's so much focus on this Hurlings thing and, and clinching the world title and it being a storyline and in front of the home fans who went nuts when he crossed the finish line to win the world title is really cool to see. <clears throat> um, 
Caroli, very gracious champion. I, or, or, uh, I mean, yeah, he's a champion, but a very gracious, you know, runner up in this series. As he always is, uh, Caroli is a true sportsman, and after they cross the line and Hurlings wins the world title, Caroli goes right up to him and, you know, congratulates him, gives him a hug. Uh, that second race, they also had a good battle, and again, right after the finish, they shake hands and give each other thumbs up, and then on the podium, they're celebrating, and in pictures, they're celebrating, and all that stuff like that. So it's really cool to see two guys that were very competitive with each other this year. Um, you know, got into each other on a few occasions. Kyroli really hit the deck pretty good one time when they got together. That uh, even after it all, they can still grab a beer together and and celebrate how awesome both of them are. Kyroli, really <coughs> a nine-time world champion, and now Hurling's a four-time world champion. Uh, pretty incredible stuff for both of those guys, and really excited to see them at Redbud in the Motocross the Nations. Behind them, it was uh, Max Anstey getting back on form a little bit. Uh, he's been really up and down this year. Um, goes 3-4 to pick up third overall here at Assen. And um, it's crazy to think that he has no ride next year. Uh, the guy that goes 1-1 at the Motocross the Nations in 2017. You know, a podium threat in the GP class still. Um, on occasion, I think he could probably still win a race. And if he just put it all together, he could, you know, easily be a week-in, week-out podium guy. Um, but no ride available apparently for Max Anstey next year in the GPs. Nothing lined up <clears throat> as of now. There's been hotly debated rumors that he might be coming back to the United States. <clears throat> he did race for Star Racing Yamaha back in 2010, so it wouldn't be his first trip over in the USA. And uh, he also actually, when he rode for Rockstar Suzuki in Europe, spent uh, a few rounds in 2014 maybe it was 2014 or 2015 racing uh, first couple rounds of Supercross so he's no stranger to it so it's you know something that could still end up on the table that he gets a ride with a 250 team in the USA I'm sure any team in the USA would be happy to have him because not only could he maybe win them an outdoor title uh, but clearly he has Supercross experience so <clears throat> gonna be interesting to see where he goes with that uh, fourth place behind him Glenn Coldenhop no surprise there uh, Dutch guy in the Dutch sand killing it uh, my god the Netherlands team is going to be practically unbeatable at the motocross the nations in 2019 on this very track I mean they're going to be Hurlings, Koldenhoff and you know you throw a name up for who the last guy is going to be uh, it could be Bogers it could be Valandrin now even though he's South African but he's racing for the team this year <coughs> um, I mean the Dutch are always good in the sand and uh, you know this race being right here next year I think that they're probably going to be a shoe in to win it at least in my opinion um, and then rounding out the top five was Geyser and Geyser's had his share of ups and downs this year but I feel like of late it's been more good than bad and that's good to see um, hopefully he can carry this momentum and have a smooth off season he will not be racing the motocross the nations for Slovenia uh, they're not going to send a team to Redbud, which is a little sad because no geyser kind of takes a little bit of the star power out of the donations. Same for, you know, not having Muscan there, but uh, cool to see the other guys are coming. And uh, that was the MXGP class. And up next, we're going to take a look at the MX2 class. So pull those results up. I did watch the GP, but I like having the results up in front of me now so I can tell you guys what happened instead of uh, flounder around and try to remember exactly what happened. Um, but what I do know that happened at the MXGP of the Netherlands in the MX2 class is Jorge Prado dominated. Um, practically untouched, a really smooth weekend. Uh, entered the GP with, I think, a 28-point lead in the championship, so he needed kind of a big point swing to leave Assen with the world title in hand because he needed to be 50 points or more up. And uh, it almost happened. Paul's Jonas, his defend the defending champion and his championship combatant in this series, goes down in the first corner of the first moto. Uh, gets up, rides like a man, madman, fights his way forward, gets up to eighth, which I mean, wasn't it wasn't as good as he could have done, but that's still pretty impressive from crashing in the first corner but it looks like it kind of spent him for the second moto because he got a decent start in the second moto, but didn't really kind of produce anything from there. 
uh, just hovered around the top five, ended up sixth, and um, eight six to uh, Prado going one one, swung the points almost back in Prado's favor to leave with the world title. Uh, has a 46 point lead going into Imola, and just like with Hurlings this past weekend at Assen, uh, pretty much has to have disaster happen for him not to win the world title. And kind of like I mentioned about Hurlings and Cairoli, even if Prado gets hurt per se, um, going into Imola, for example, if, you know, Paul's Jonas has to go 1 2 2 1 1 1. To win the world title if uh, Prado gets no points at the GP, which I'd imagine even if he broke his leg, he'd still probably try to line up just to score a point or two to make it, you know, solidify it. Um, so, gotta believe that the odds are in Prado's favor here, especially with Jonas having a bad race and all the momentum being kind of sucked out of the room, if you will, for him. And uh, crazy to think that. As young as Prado is, he's about to become a world champion. So much poise, so much speed, and uh, I'm actually really excited to see him because he's going to be on Team Spain at the Motocross Nations at Redbud. And I think American fans just don't, again, kind of know what's going to hit him. Like the same thing with when Roxon and Muscan came over, and uh, you know it took them a little bit to get going in the USA, but now they're superstars essentially. I mean. Prado is, I think, going to be like the next big thing um, to come after Hurlings. I mean, he's still pretty young. Hurlings, I think, is like six years older than Prado, so you can imagine that there's going to be a decent amount of time at some point in Prado's career that Hurlings isn't on the same racetrack as him uh, because he retired. So I think Prado's kind of the next real deal, and he's certainly impressed people this year impressed me i think you know on home on home soil he's probably not going to compete with like plessinger but I, I would say he's probably gonna be the second or maybe the third best guy in the mx2 class at the motocross nations and that's that's pretty you know big for spain and for prado and everything i am really excited to see how he does because i think like i said i think he's going to impress more than people are leading on to believe from him. Behind him, Thomas Covington uh, is about to bring his MX2 career to a close. Uh, probably his MXGP career to a close. Depends on what happens, but he's coming to the United States next year. And cool to see that he ended up on the podium in Aston. He won a GP a few weeks back, so um, definitely has turned it around in the second half of the season. He's probably going to end up fifth in the World Championship. So not exactly where you had hoped to finish, I'd assume, but uh, yeah, coming here for Rockstar Husky next year and uh, racing some Supercross, racing some Nationals. I think he's going to be a threat to win said Nationals and um, definitely excited for that, but cool to see him get back up on the podium. And uh, behind him, his teammate, Thomas Kier Olsen, rounds out the podium in the MX2 class at Assen. Um, pretty, I don't know, feel like standard weekend with uh, KTM Husky Husky 123. Uh, right behind them was Calvin Valandrin, who I said also earlier was going to ride for uh, the Dutch team in the Motocross Nations this year. Really has come on strong, won a GP in Indonesia. Um, good to see him kind of at form. And uh, yeah, I don't know. MXGP of the Netherlands. Jeffrey Hurlings clinches the world title. Prado gets awfully close and probably will at the MXGP in Imola. And that's been a recap of the uh, aforementioned MXGP of the Netherlands at Aston. This is a really interesting racetrack. Uh, a lot of people are not a big fan of the concept of building tracks each year because, I mean, this track is not a permanent racetrack. It is sand that's literally poured on top of asphalt on a road racing course that's part of the MotoGP World Championship. Um, so it's kind of cool because they use that huge stadium section like to have really good viewing for the fans and it's probably a really great place to watch a race because you get so much you know action right in front of you and you get a seat to sit in and stuff like that um, but it's not you know people fans aren't necessarily in love with the concept i don't mind it because i think if you're going to build a man-made track that the dirt of choice for it should be sand which this is because you know, a sand track 
kind of self-produces itself. If you lay down a dirt track, you're just laying down like a, you know, a super cross track in the middle of nowhere type thing. Are we gonna cross the line with time to spare? No, we're not, so two to go. <clears throat> um, but uh, yeah, I don't really mind this track because it is sand and it does develop into some really gnarly deep stuff. Um, I mean, just watch the race on that uh, from the track. Uh, you know, we'll go to YouTube and type it in and watch it yourself. It's pretty impressive how much dirt they bring in, the type of track that they make, how rough the track gets, and really it does produce some some pretty epic racing. Oh, come on with the cutting of the track. <coughs> Caroli and Koldenhoff making life difficult for hurlings in the Netherlands. Looks exactly like what happened this past weekend. <laughs> Caroli is no slouch in the sand either, uh, it must be said. Um, probably the second best sand rider on earth right now. And uh, I feel like people are going to be like, Oh, Tomek is ridiculous. He's amazing in the sand. And like, sure, he is. But the sand of Southwick is a lot different than the sands of Lommel and Assen and Valkensward. Like, this is like bottomless pit sand. You just keep, you know, pinning it and it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Southwick seems to have a, a bottom to it. You get to a certain point where you're hitting like kind of hard dirt. This isn't the case with <laughs> Dutch tracks and sandy Dutch tracks, or the sandy track in Belgium. Like, it's just endless sand. And these guys are masterful at riding it. Like, hurlings, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what bike you're on, it doesn't matter what year it is. Hurlings is the sand master. And uh, like I said, Caroli is not that far off. He is really good too. So I, poof. When the USA comes to Aston in 2019 for the Motocross Nations, they're, uh, they're gonna be in trouble. I remember when they went to Lommel back in 2012 with Dungey and Baggett and Barsha and you thought, uh, they might have a chance. Like what team really is putting, you know, another solid effort together. The Netherlands wasn't really whole at the time, like with, you know, a good solid complete team. Now they do have a complete team and Italy wasn't really a full team and Germany won that day in USA ended up on the podium but still like uh, yeah I, the sand and usa uh, they're gonna have a tough time but yeah this is the mxgp of valkens wrap up from assen hope you guys enjoyed it uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below about my thoughts and opinions and i'll catch you guys in another video sometime soon on the channel so long for now